Thieves were not counting on the cameras. Coming up, the new video that could bring crooks to justice. Plus, internet out, phones down, a massive CenturyLink outage, and some customers going nearly a full day without service. And taking the guesswork out of going to the hospital, the info you'll soon be able to find online before you go in for treatment. So they got away with it, apparently, for now, anyway, but the cameras were rolling the entire time. Good evening. I'm Dan Haggerty. And I'm Maggie Vespa. We're talking about an early morning car theft. We first brought you this story at noon, but now there is security video to go along with it. Let's go to KGW's Devin Haskins, live outside of Southeast Foster and 139th in Portland, where this all took place. Devin, what can you tell us? Dan, that video was brought to us by or provided to us by a woman whose car was also broken into. Now, she didn't want her face shown, but she does walk us through what her cameras caught. So you watch, you can see them coming up. From the security video shooting across Tanya's driveway, you can clearly see the Volkswagen Passat pull up. One getting out in the red. Another man in white gets out as well. The driver takes off down the road. And then the one in the red is going to run to my car. And then the white, he's going to my neighbor's house to get her car. And that's exactly what the camera shows. First, for 50 seconds, the man in the red sweatshirt rifles through her car. Tanya speculates on what he's doing. He's trying to figure out how to hotwire a push start cart, a push start car. But then they, I guess they notice that we have cameras everywhere. At the same time, you see this man in white. He disappears into her neighbor's driveway. 11 seconds later, backs out, stealing the Volkswagen Beetle that was warming up in the driveway. It's a series of events that doesn't make sense to Tanya. Why would you come to a dead end to steal a car because you only have one way in and one way out? And we're all watching. We're all watching. So now we're going to get up earlier and watch out for each other. Both vehicles were found a block or two away. All three men nowhere to be seen. At some point after the Beetle was stolen, another neighbor confronted one of the thieves trying to break into another car. That's when gunshots were fired. Luckily, no one was hurt. Neighbors say this is happening too often. I may have not noticed all of them, but I have heard about them. And uh, my neighbor across the street from me, her car was stolen two nights ago. That facade that the three showed up in, well, that was also reported stolen, but out of Clackamas County. Back to you. All right, hopefully uh, police can make some moves on that, helped by that surveillance video. Appreciate it, Devin. I want to tell you about a fight that led to a shooting outside of a restaurant in Beaverton today. Two people were hurt. This happened at the Indian Connection restaurant on Northwest Corridor Court. Police say that one man was shot in the leg. Another person was hurt when he was hit by shrapnel. People on the scene say it started as a fight in the restaurant that spilled outside. What that fight was about, we don't know. Police do have a suspect in custody, though. They say it was most likely an isolated incident. They don't believe that there is any future danger to the public. Well, sad news in Salem tonight. A train hit and killed a woman today. Yeah, it happened near 12th Street and Marion Street Northeast. Salem police have just identified this woman. So she is 46 year old Michelle Manis. Police, of course, shutting down the streets nearby and that surrounding area to investigate this. And they say that those roads are going to stay closed for at least the next several hours. If you want to have a full list of those closures in that area, head to our website, KGW.com. A Portland man is accused in a violent downtown crime spree that included breaking windows and assaulting employees at a ramen restaurant. Police arrested 35 year old Stephen Pouste. He is accused of robbing Mika Sushi on Southwest 2nd Avenue last night. And then during the investigation, officers also learned Pouste reportedly broke a window at a ramen restaurant and assaulted employees at Century Towers. He is facing multiple charges. Yeah, sounds like it. All right, let's take a look outside right now. This is a look from our Wells Fargo Sky Cam. Beautiful night. The city's lit, lit up pretty yeah. good. It was a, following a, what was a dry day. Meteorologist Chris McGinnis joining us now. Um, it says in the prompter, is it going to stay dry? I'm going to answer that. <laughs> okay, one I got chided for asking that no. question at four. <laughs> and now I need to turn the tables on Dan and say, come on, Dan. <laughs> Welcome to Oregon. Yeah, you know that's not going to last. In fact, we do have rain back in the picture. Tomorrow more on that in a second after a pretty nice day though today nice by late December standards when you see a couple sun breaks you say ah, it's nice right okay uh, 44 degrees last check at the airport light west breeze out there a mostly cloudy sky clouds actually already starting to thicken up just a little bit want to switch gears and whoop did we lose our camera there where's our camera there you go it's been a tough go of it over the mountain the last couple of days lots of skiers 
and folks heading up to the higher terrain. That is a live look right now from the ODOT Cameron government camp. You can see ODOT's got it down to bare pavement, but the snow plows keeping the traffic running a little extra slow there. All right, chilly night ahead. Rain returns tomorrow. How much? I'll show you in a second. And we will be on and off wet, not only Friday, but probably again Saturday and through Saturday night until things uh, finally taper off sometime during the day on Sunday. Here's a sneak peek at Futurecast. Clouds rolling in tonight, and our model wants to spit out a little bit of light rain at the coast even before midnight tonight. Not entirely out of the question, probably holding off in the metro area until sometime tomorrow morning with light rain. Your full forecast coming up. It's just a few minutes. All right, Chris, sounds good. Thank you. In the meantime, we are almost a full day into a massive CenturyLink outage affecting customers' phone and Internet service nationwide. A large concentration of the outage is actually here in the Pacific Northwest, lovely enough, and also in the Midwest. The company acknowledged their problem on Twitter, saying they were working to restore service as quickly as possible. We, for our part, tried calling CenturyLink's local corporate offices, but surprise, they Airlines are down because of their own outage. It's unclear when service might be restored, but some users are starting to report their service is back up and running. You know, we didn't always used to have cell phones, but you forget that. I don't know That's what true. I do about mine. All right, um, so it's one of the biggest questions when you go to the hospital. How much is the bill going to That's be? a nerve-wracking question, too. In a few days, hospitals will have to post their prices online. Big change here. KGW investigator Kristen Severance joins us now with details of this federal rule. And Kristen, advocates say, or some say, there's still a long way to go when it comes to transparency and pricing here. Exactly, they certainly do. So starting January 1st, hospitals will have to post a master list of prices for the services they provide. Everything from an emergency room visit to an organ transplant. The healthcare industry has been criticized nationally for having little price transparency, which makes it impossible for consumers to price compare. Some advocates say this new rule won't really help patients, though, because most of us don't pay those master list prices. Instead, our insurance companies negotiate their own prices prices with hospitals, but it's still a good resource for people who are uninsured or going out of network. Now I talked to Tom Sin sick with health care for all Oregon. He said this is pretty interesting. He said all this does is emphasize the complexity of our health care system. Treating patients as the consumer is not the best way to get them care. And he explained it like this. He said health care should not be a market based system where people are treated as consumers. He went on, on to say this was interesting. Health care should not be like fire insurance hmm. where you get it, but you hope not to use it. He said this is not something where you can really choose whether to use it or not. Yeah, everybody's going to have to use it at some point. Right. I mean, I think it's it is good. I mean, as a, you know, longtime consumer investigator, it is good to get that master list. We always knew it existed. Let's get it online. Let's yeah. see what all these hospitals are paying. But we have your insurance and your deductible, so there's there's a lot of variables there. Oh, definitely. A long yeah. way to go, but this is a, a, an important step. I think so, yes. All right. Thank all right. you so much. You Kristen, bet. thank you. And if you have a story idea for Kristen to investigate, you can give her a call. We have the information right there on your screen, 503-226-5041. Or you can always hop online and you can email call Kristen at kgw.com. Two people were arrested after police say they pulled a gun on someone who they thought swiped an ATM card. Police say Jarrah Hicks and County Motley Jr. confronted someone at a U.S. bank in northeast Portland. And during that confrontation, one of these two pulled out a gun, police say. When officers searched the person's car who they suspected stole the ATM card, officers didn't find any stolen items inside. But when they searched the suspect's car, they found these two handguns. Hicks and Motley Jr. are facing multiple charges, including possession of a loaded firearm. All right, now to an inspiring story. A Portland native receiving global praise for his record-setting trek across Antarctica. And to be clear, 33-year-old Colin O'Brady is used to pushing or shattering limits, but this time he did this on Earth's coldest, windiest, most remote continent. Um, it's minus 40 degrees average temperature and uh, 24 hours of daylight, but it was so cold last time I was down there that photo just show it that I threw a cup of boiling water into the air and it poof, immediately turns into ice. So you can imagine what it's Colin like. Colin to... O'Brady dubbed his trek the impossible first for a reason. Still before setting out, he told KGW's Cassidy Quinn 
he couldn't resist. Yeah, no one in history has ever crossed the entire continent of Antarctica solo and unsupported. Today, O'Brady spoke on the phone with NBC News as he caught up on some well-deserved rest. A dream this big is certainly outside of the box. You know, uh, there's a reason no one in history has ever been able to accomplish this feat. The 33-year-old Portland native was all alone in the coldest place on Earth. He had been covering about 20 miles a day, but he completed his trek with an incredible 77-mile sprint to the finish. Something just came over me. I was like, you know what? I wonder if I could just go for it all in one crazy big push. With that push, the Lincoln High and Yale University grad stunned the world, becoming the first person to cross Antarctica alone, unassisted, without any supply drops. He did it in 54 days, dragging a sled that weighs 400 pounds. Keep in mind, this was just months after another of O'Brady's jaw-dropping feats. I freaking did it! This summer, O'Brady climbed to the tallest peak in every state. It's part of an incredible career fueled by unspeakable tragedy. Ten years ago, I was severely burned in a fire, and the doctors told me I would never walk again normally. O'Brady, of course, proved doctors wrong to the extreme. Tonight, as he thaws out with friends and family, his 2017 TED Talk speaks to anyone else chasing their own impossible first. Look, I'm just a regular guy from Portland, but I can confidently tell you this. Achievement is not for the select few. Achievement is simply for those who never quit. Okay, so speaking of never quitting, a yeah. few years back, O'Brady also completed what's known as the Explorer's Grand Slam, and that means he climbed the highest peak on each of the seven continents, and he reached both the North and South polls. I skipped the gym this morning. Yeah, he said, I'm just a normal guy from uh, Portland. I'm like, no, you're not. <laughs> not at all. And I keep thinking about the isolation yeah. walking across He's, Antarctica. That was what he said in that uh, he had a satellite interview when he, or a phone interview with OPB, and he said, you don't see a soul and there's never a day off. So 54 days no encounters with other humans and it's and it, just freezing. It's almost like you think of being in isolation like a prison cell, right? There's, it might be vast, but there's no change in the environment. Yeah. You don't see any mountains. You don't see any buildings. It's nothingness. He's an incredible human. He really sure. is. Um, I, I'm excited for him to come back to Portland. Maybe yeah. we sit down and talk to the Definitely. guy. Definitely. All right. We also want to tell you about coming up a new twist on an old scam. Our fraudsters are changing up some taxi tactics here to take advantage of more people to make themselves even harder to spot. All right. Plus, paying to bring baseball to Portland, what the Portland Diamond Project is offering the Port of Portland to build a park there.